Hello. Today, we will be discussing functionalism and its importance as an emerging school of thought in the psychology of the 19th and early 20th centuries. Functionalism was characterized by a focus on the practical application of psychology and the adaptive functions of mental processes and behaviors. It broadly rejected the introspective and reductionist methods of structuralism in favor of more dynamic and holistic perspectives in understanding behavior in the mental process. Significant to this development of functionalism was the publication of William James' influential book, The Principles of Psychology, in 1890. James rejected the idea that consciousness could be broken down into discrete elements or sensations as proposed in the past, and instead emphasized the importance of studying how the mental process adapts to the needs of an organism in its environment. Similar to this functionalist perspective was the work also of John Dewey, who emphasized the role of experience and action in shaping behavior and thought. Dewey is considered the founder of functionalism, and furthered the overall argument that the mind and body are not separate entities, but rather are intimately connected in a process of ongoing adaptation to the changing social and environmental circumstances. Other key figures in the development of functionalism include James Angell, Harvey Carr, and Robert Woodworth, who applied functionalist principles and theories to a wide range of topics, including perception, learning, motivation, respectively. All of these more pragmatic foci of leading functionalists carried cause to reassess and evaluate how the processes of learning, motivation, and emotion could be understood in relationship to the real world problems. As such, the functionalist laboratories attempted to measure and understand how individuals adapt to changing environmental conditions as well as refine the social application proposals for education and public administrations. During this period, Hugo Munsterberg promoted clinical psychology and the idea of reciprocal antagonism, which posited that the practice of good thoughts would aid in overcoming bad ones, a kind of precursor to positivism or what we contemporarily think of as neuroplasticity and cognitive behavioral therapies. Musterberg's development of several applied psychologies would ultimately create the fields of forensic psychology and industrial organizational psychologies during this time. Meanwhile, G. Stanley Hall, president of Clark University, popularized the theory of recapitulation. As first proposed by Ernst Haeckel in Germany, the theory suggests that a developing human would pass through evolutionary stages, wherein impulsive and cruel behaviors would eventually give way to more controlled adulthood behaviors, given that the tendencies were allowed to be explored and processed in early childhood. Retarding or stagnating these developments was suggested to result in their retention into adulthood by Hall and other proponents. Many of the holistic qualities emphasized in functionalism communicated the importance of studying behavior and mental processes integrated wholes, rather than breaking them down into the discrete components. A functionalist might say that behavior could only be fully understood by interpreting how said behavior helped that organism adapt to its environment. An example, Thorndike's puzzle box experiment placed a hungry cat inside of a box with a latch that the cat could open by pressing a lever. The cat had to learn how to escape from the box in order to obtain food. Through repeated trials, the cat gradually learned to associate pressing the lever with opening the latch and escaping from the box. This experiment demonstrated how animals adapt to their, adapt their behavior in response to environmental cues and rewards. One feels the urge to assume that this experiment was a predecessor to the well-known Skinner box experiments, I have to say. Speaking now to the functionalist interpretation of emotions, William James and Carl Lang developed a theory of emotion that emphasized the adaptive function of emotions. It was proposed that the emotions arise from physiological responses to environmental stimuli, rather than being purely cognitive or subjective experiences. According to James, if we see a bear, we run, and then we are frightened. This theory suggests that emotions are adaptive in that they help individuals relate to their responses quickly and effectively after environmental challenges have presented themselves. As we have discussed these pragmatic and holistic perspectives in psychology and the mind process itself, I hope the clear distinctions between the introspective and reductionist methods of structuralism have stood out from the contemporary functionalist practices in the field today. All of my sources uh, come from the textbook itself and from lecture. Thank you very much.